What's going on everyone? Welcome back. Today we're talking about tendon injuries, how we manage tendon injuries that walk through our door, what are some of the common types of uh, tendon presentations, um, and what it actually means. So, um, you know, just like any injury, uh, you know, you can have different presentations and different types of injuries require a very different treatment approach along that, um, you know, treatment continuum. So um, that's what we want to talk a little bit about today. And, you know, the, the first thing that we need to mention is tendons are resilient. They are very, very strong. They are much stronger than people realize and that people give them credit for. It takes over 1,400, uh, sorry, 14,000 pounds of pressure to actually rupture a tendon. So um, 14,503 pounds per square inch of pressure is the actual breaking point for a tendon. Um, and that was kind of a wow factor that hit me when we were at a course once. And I'm hoping that there's a little bit of a wow factor for you right now. So, I mean, when you think about the pressure in your car tires, anywhere from, I don't know what, 35 to 45 PSI, that's how much you pump up your car tires to, all right? Again, 14,503 pounds per square inch of pressure to reach that breaking point for your tendons, okay? Tendons are resilient. They can handle a lot of what we throw at them. And because of that, we actually do not treat them nearly appropriately enough, um, you know, for the majority of um, injuries. So what that means is we really have to load them up um, to a high potential of their capacity. And we need to actually challenge them because they have one job and that's to store and release energy. So tendons need to be stressed. They actually respond better when they're stressed. And total rest is actually quite um, detrimental for tendons, right? Tendons need to maintain a high capacity to transmit the force that your muscles produce. So tendons need to maintain a high capacity to transmit that force from the muscle to the bone. And in order to do that, you need to constantly train it. If you just completely rest it, you're actually going to lose capacity and you're going to end up setting yourself farther back. So that's a term that we call catabolic in the industry. Anabolic is what helps facilitate growth and builds things up. Catabolism or being in a catabolic state is where that capacity is reduced and the tissue is actually broken down. So rest is catabolic for tissue. Your tendons need to be stressed in order to make improvements. And because of that, well, you shouldn't rest for too long. Okay. So that's kind of a good segue into, uh, you know, what I want to talk about as far as tendons and what kind of presentations usually walk through our doors and, and what we can do to address them. So tendon injuries make up almost 50% of all sports injuries, okay? All orthopedic and sports injuries, they're very, very common and um, they have a, a handful of different common presentations. So um, along that treatment-based continuum, we need to decide what kind of state your tendon is in, what type of injury it is, and where do we go from there? So, um, you know, one of them is a, um, an acute presentation where you have an acute inflammation. Um, it's painful at rest. It's painful during movement. It's just painful all the time. And it can even present with some swelling there. Usually we see this after high bouts of activity, um, you know, greatly, uh, increased from what your body has been used to. I'll give you an example. A few years ago, um, you know, I went running for a St. Paddy's Day run and, you know, there were a bunch of us there and I hadn't really run hills in a long time. And this route was very net downhill, I believe. So a lot of going downhill while running, that places a lot of stress on my knee to slow myself down against gravity. So that puts a lot of a specific type of force on my tendon. And the next day, my, actually, my tendon kind of sat on like this. I remember locking up the, the door at the office. I was leaving to go to a, a lunch meeting. And when I locked the door, I turned around. I was like, oh, wow, my knee feels kind of funky. Got in my car. I'm like, wow, my knee feels really stiff. And then by the time I got to the stoplight a couple hundred feet down the road, I was actually writhing in pain in the driver's seat. I was actually sitting there like, oh God, what is going on? It felt like somebody was hitting me with a hot poker right in my knee. And I actually had an acute inflammation of my quadricep tendon. And that is an acute inflammation, okay? So that's what we call tendonitis. It's very acute, um, it's actively inflamed. And the goal for that is to actually calm down the inflammation, um, rest it a little bit, only as little as possible, before we get you, yourself into a position where we can actually start loading the tissue. So a very acute, active, in, uh, actively inflamed uh, tendon is one type of tendon presentation. There's also a reactive uh, tendon. And what that means is 
on the surface, it looks like things are fine, but as soon as you start to go push the limits a little bit and test the limits, um, you actually start to flare it up again and you get a high amount of pain, high symptoms, and um, you just feel like you're kind of in this, in this vicious cycle. So um, that's what we call a reactive tendon. Um, think of yourself as being in a very agitated state and you're stressed out, you don't have any sleep, um, you know, you're angry, you're nervous about things, and all of a sudden somebody comes up to you and, and they need you to do something. You're kind of on edge and you're ready to snap at any point. That's like what a reactive tendon is, okay? So it's in a state where it's really, the capacity is not there, it's tolerance to loading and stresses are really not where it needs to be, but it's not actively inflamed right now. But the slightest amount of stress on there may actually turn that into a full-blown acute inflammation again. So um, the way we treat a reactive tendon is um, very similar to um, an actively inflamed one. We wanna remove the offensive activity. Okay, we want to remove the abusive load, whatever is being noxious for the tendon and causing it to exceed its capacity. So first you want to remove those. It's like if you have a bruise, all right, and you want to let the bruise heal, you don't want to keep poking it. The more you keep poking it, the longer it's going to take to heal. Even though healing is trying to take place concurrently, you keep knocking into that thing, you're going to keep, um, you know, keep that bruise there for longer than you want. So for a reactive tendon, we have to remove that offensive activity and we have to protect it as much as we can, but only as as little as we need to protect it to get us ready again to get back into um, a stress state so we can load that tendon up and start to um, implement some sort of stress response there and get it stronger and increase its tolerance to loading so um, you know once that inflammation subsides we can start to load it again um, and then we can get right back into it so that's a reactive tendon and we see this with a lot of you know let's just say a runner sometimes if if they have a previous injury and that the tendon is really not in a good um, quality state, um, doesn't have high tolerance for repetitive loading, this person starts to go out running. And again, maybe they can run flat level ground at a constant speed, but the second they try and introduce speed work intervals or maybe even hills or jumping, it flares them right back up. So um, that's what we call a, a reactive tendon and that's how it presents. And obviously um, I, I just took you through the first couple days and maybe week to seven days of, of managing that. The majority of what we see when it comes to tendinous presentations are in this degenerative or recalcitrant state, right? So what that means is the tendon is not acutely inflamed, nor is it going to get inflamed right now, but its, it's tolerance is not quite there to what demands you're placing on it, and you feel it. This is the kind of tendon where you feel it when you walk up and down stairs, or you feel it when you squat down, or you feel it in the beginning of a run or during your warm up, and then you loosen up and your body warms up and it kind of goes away. But then you get in the car afterwards, you drive home and you get out of the car and you're like, oh man, my knee is stiff. That's kind of barking at me a little bit. Um, again, the, going up and down stairs, you know, knee pain is really, really common. Those are what we call a degenerative or recalcitrant, you know, tendon issue, okay, a, a tendinopathy. So it's a condition of the tendon where it's not acutely inflamed, nor is it on the brink of being acutely inflamed, but it, the demands are here that you're placing on it and its capacity is here. And that therein lies the difference. That gap is your risk of injury. And that gap is what we need to, to close. We need to bring the capacity of that tendon back up to the level of the demands that you're placing on them. And so again, the biggest difference is you're not inflamed and you're not on the, at risk of being inflamed. And we can tell this by either strength testing um, or by your subjective history and, and you telling us basically what the symptom pattern has been like. Um, so, you know, in this degenerative or recalcitrant state, it's actually much uh, much more important to load it up immediately and load it up aggressively to actually start to implement some changes in the tendon to actually close that gap. And so you don't get to the point where you, you feel it when you're going up and down stairs. You don't feel it when you're squatting down to get something up off the floor, or you don't feel it when you're getting out of the, off the sofa or off the toilet, things like that, right? So you can high, you're still high functioning. You can go out for a run. You could play your weekend recreational soccer, or softball, or uh, kickball leagues, whatever it might be, but your knee barks at you afterwards for a little while, but nowhere near the same as if it's actively inflamed. So, um, you know, we really truly see that with mechanical loading only. That's kind of one of the um, ideal classic markers for a recalcitrant tendon issue is symptoms are exacerbated with mechanical loading. So that's kind of one of the, uh, the main things that we see. So Lincoln's here to come say hello, I guess. He always knows when I'm uh, talking on the camera. So um, those are kind of the three main presentations we see with, uh, with tendons. And again, the most common one, if, if 30 to 50% of all sports injuries are tendon issues, right? And we know that the majority of those are going to be degenerative and recalcitrant, um, where we're still high functioning, but it barks at us. Well, we need to be able to break out of that cycle too. And 
most people don't address it enough. They kind of rest for a little bit and then they get back into it. Well, we already talked about how rest is going to be detrimental for your recovery process and conventional wisdom wants us to rest. But again, if you come in and we find that that's the state you're in, you have a, a recalcitrant tendon issue. No, we want to load you up almost immediately. And again, remember, this is going to come full circle now. 14,503 PSI for uh, the breaking point for a tendon. If that's the breaking point for a tendon, and we know we need to load the tendon up, then you've got to load it up big time. Okay, so uh, when we talk about strength training, you have to choose an appropriate load that's going to actually stimulate a change in your body. So if I take a one pound dumbbell, it's not going to do much for my biceps. It's just my capacity is much greater than one pound. It's not a whole lot compared to what it used to be 10 years ago, but it's still far more than one pound. So one pound is not going to do much for me. I'm going to be spinning my wheels. I need to choose a weight that's heavy enough to stimulate a change in my soft tissue. So likewise for the tendons, it actually takes 85% of your potential or your one rep max to implement an appropriate change in the tissue itself. So um, we need people to load themselves up higher, um, you know, with weights and more aggressively when it comes to resistance training. And most people just aren't comfortable enough doing that for either conventional wisdom. They think, oh, I need to play it safe a little bit. I don't want to overdo it. Well, I'm telling you right now, you need to over, you don't want to overdo it, but you need to push the needle a little bit. It's okay to push past what you think is your comfort level and break into that area where we're getting close to your one rep max, 85% of your one rep max. That means if you can only squat hundred pounds, you need to be squatting 85 pounds and moving 85% of your one rep max in order to stimulate a change. That's going to be heavy work. Okay. None of this, you know, doing three, four five sets of, you know, you know, 10, 12, 15 reps, and you still have gas left in the tank. No, no, no. We need you pushing yourself to actually stimulate a change. Adding tempo into these uh, movements can also do wonders for, uh, for your tendon and the, and the tissue because it's time under tension that actually, actually stimulates a change. But again, the take home message is we need you loading your tissues up to at least 85% of your one rep max. Most people don't know what their one rep max is and there are workarounds for that as well, but this is where some guidance is really important. So, um, you know, that's really what I wanted to talk about is, um, you know, the types of tendon issues that we see a little background, uh, you know, behind tendons, um, you know, but that's really, that's our approach to it is loaded up more. So remember three types of, uh, tendon presentations that we most commonly see acutely inflamed. You want to protect it for a couple of days and then start to load it appropriately. A reactive tendon where it's really teetering on the brink of, uh, its tolerance to activity. Um, and when you flare it up, um, we need to let it calm down and then load it appropriately. Or if we get you in a phase where it's not acutely inflamed, we can load it up immediately, but we have to do it very carefully. Um, it's still 85% of what its current tolerance is. Okay. And then the recalcitrant issues where you're still high functioning, but your tendons, you know, kind of react, um, you know, based on the activity you do, whether it's your knees for running, your Achilles for jumping, your shoulder for push-ups and bench press, things like that. If you're in a recalcitrant state, then we need to load your tendons up in a specific manner and very high. So that's really the take home for today, everybody. Your tendons are resilient. Their main job is to store and release energy. They want to work. They do much better when they're placed under higher loads because it keeps them fresh. It keeps them strong. It's like learning a language. If you don't practice it, you're going to lose your ability to use that language. So your tendons, if you don't stress them enough, you're going to lose the ability for them to work at high rates and they need to work at high rates when we want to be active. So those are kind of my spitball thoughts on uh, tendons for the day. Um, you know, if you have any questions, guys, please reach out to us, let us know. Uh, but tendons can be kind of finicky, um, but they're very resilient and we need to uh, appreciate their capabilities, appreciate what they can actually do for us and then start to uh, take care of them appropriately. So let us know what you think. Uh, thank you guys for subscribing. We're, uh, our subscribing numbers are, are creeping up there, so we're having fun with that. Uh, but we appreciate all the views. We appreciate the follows and the shares. And, uh, you know, we want to hear from you guys. So thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you next time. Happy training.